so, so in this video, I wanted to talk about the Diffie-Hellman protocol. And the Diffie-Hellman protocol is basically uh, this really amazing result, um, just a phenomenal result in the area of cryptography uh, that really has enabled a lot of the commerce that we see today online. So this is called the Diffie-Hellman protocol. And actually, um, even though it's typically called Diffie-Hellman, uh, there's also a fellow by the name of Ralph Merkel who was involved in, in some of the key ideas that I think led to this protocol. So some people uh, like to give them credit along with the protocol called the Diffie-Hellman-Merkel protocol, although typically uh, when you look online, you, you mostly will see this protocol associated with uh, just Diffie and Hellman. And this protocol was actually invented in the late 70s, uh, 1976 or so. Um, and this protocol uh, ended up inspiring other works. So for example, uh, the Diffie-Hellman protocol was the inspiration uh, for uh, the, the RSA protocol. Uh, and RSA, in fact, um, and Diffie-Hellman and uh, a bunch of these protocols were, were eventually implemented within another protocol called SSL. And SSL is really, uh, it's known as Secure Sockets Layer. And this is the real, this is the protocol that, that allowed e-commerce to happen. This is really just, you know, uh, this in many ways was the, the enabler for e-commerce. Uh, in fact, when you go to uh, a site like uh, Amazon.com, uh, and it tells you, you know, there's a little lock icon on the browser window, and it says that uh, your transaction is secure. It's because of these schemes, it's because of Diffie-Hellman and RSA, that they can say that. And really, what, what these protocols were designed to do, uh, they were designed to allow two parties, uh, and typically in, in the literature, we, we, we call them um, Alice and Bob, so we, we will typically say Alice and Bob, so that they allow two parties, Alice and Bob, to agree on a secret key. So let's say if you've got Alice and Bob, it allows them to agree on a shared secret, a shared value between the two of them, um, even if they're communicating over a channel that can be eavesdropped upon. And, and imagine you have, you have a third party, let's call her Eve, and this is what you typically see in crypto. If Eve can listen in, and then let's say she's got a, let's give her some ears. And let's say Eve's a really good listener. And, uh, Features too. Okay, let's give her some hair. Let's say Eve is a, is a really good listener, and she's listening. She can listen to everything that Alice and Bob are saying. Um, Alice and Bob would have to be really careful. It'd be very hard for Alice and Bob to come up with a shared secret because let's say that, that if, if Bob came up with a secret value that they could use, and he tried to just send it to Alice, then Eve would listen to that and, and know their shared secret. And likewise, if Alice tried to do the same thing and send a secret over to Bob. Um, again, E could listen. So you might be wondering, how is it possible for them, for Alice and Bob to communicate over the internet where Eve can hear everything and somehow at the end of that communication come up with a secret key? And it turns out that to use the, the way this was solved, and this is just a brilliant idea, was to use some ideas from modular arithmetic. And so here's kind of the setup behind Diffie-Hellman, the Diffie-Hellman protocol. So what we're going to have, we're going to have two parameters. We're going to call them G and P. Okay, now P is a prime number. Um, and if you recall, what's a prime number? A prime number um, is basically any number whose divisors are just one in itself. So, um, and that just basically means a prime number means it's only divisors only divisors are one and p. Uh, so for example, the numbers you know, two, three, uh, five, seven, and so on. These are all prime numbers. Okay, 13, 11, uh, 13, etc. Um, and, and in the case of Diffie-Hellman, you actually need to, to pick a large prime number. So you'll actually need a large prime number. Um, and by large, uh, we typically mean something on the order of about uh, uh, 600 digits. Okay, so 600 digits. Um, or so. And uh, the bigger the prime number in this case, the, the more secure the protocol is. I won't talk much about security in this, this first video on Diffie-Hellman, but I will uh, touch upon that subsequently. But you need a pretty large prime number, around 600 digits. Now G is just basically going to be a number between uh, uh, 2 and P minus 2. Okay, and, and really we actually need G to be a generator for the group Z mod P or ZP star, but we won't even go into that for now. Um, 
for suffice to say, just, just think of it as a random number for now between 2 and p minus 2. Okay? And we're going to rely on some properties of g ultimately. But the way that the, the setup goes is Alice is going to do the following. Alice is going to pick um, a, a number a, call it a, lowercase a. And let's say a is going to be an element of uh, what we call z p star. Let's pick it random. And z p star, um, all this is is just fancy notation for um, she's going to pick some number between 0 and p minus 1. And I know this might sound a bit abstract what I will do is after this video, I'll do another video where I'll actually walk through a numerical example of Diffie Hellman. For now, let me kind of give you the abstract notation, uh, try to make of it what you will, and then I will do we'll do a concrete example subsequent to that. Okay? And let, let's talk about what, what Alice is going to do next. Alice is going to compute uh, basically a uh, a public value, and we're going to call it capital A um, for Alice. And this public value will basically be generator g that we talked about up here uh, raised to the eighth power mod p. Okay, now um, the generator and the prime, the g and the p here, these are actually going to be public. Everyone's going to know them. Okay, um, this is just public information. Okay, but uh, the, the only secret here is going to be this value a. For Alice. So nobody knows lowercase a except for Alice. And Alice is going to send this uppercase a value, the uppercase value a, to Bob. Okay, so what is Bob going to do? Well, Bob is going to compute his own value. Let, let's call this value uh, lowercase b. And he's also going to pull it from uh, zp star. Okay, and recall, uh, as I said previously, that zp star is basically. Uh, just in this case, just represents the numbers from 0 uh, to p minus 1. Okay? And Bob is going to compute a value, and we're going to call that uppercase b. And uppercase b will be equal to g to the lowercase b mod p. Okay, and then Bob is going to send his uppercase b to Alice. So at this point, what is Alice is going to have uppercase B, Bob is going to have uppercase A, Alice is also going to know some of the materials she generated, Bob will know uh, about lowercase B as well. And I claim at this point that Alice and Bob have enough information to generate a shared value between the two of them. And, and then we'll subsequently talk about why that shared value might be something that E would have hard, a hard time figuring out. Uh, but if you want, you might want to, um, as I explain this, you might want to kind of periodically pause to see if you can figure out the rest of the steps on your own. And I think this is a good way to learn uh, math in general. Don't just kind of sit there passively as I explain everything to you, but try to pause along the way and see if you can figure things out uh, on your own before you see how I might do them. Okay? So with that, let me explain to you how Alice will come up with her portion of the shared secret. What Alice is going to basically do is, you know, she will take her, her value uppercase, or rather, um, she's going to actually first take the, the value that Bob gave her, which is lowercase, oops, okay, sorry about that, um, she's going to first take the, the value that, that Bob gave her, which is uppercase B, okay, and then she's going to raise uppercase B to the power of lowercase a. Now she knows lowercase a already. Okay? Because that's the value she came up with. Now let's think about what that's going to give her. So uppercase b to the lowercase a. Well, if you think about it, uppercase b was just g to the b, right? And mod p. Okay, and now we're going to raise that to the eighth power. Uh, and if you recall the video on um, on modular arithmetic, I did talk about the idea that um, basically when you do arithmetic modulo at any number, it kind of preserves the regular properties of arithmetic. So um, you know, g to the b mod p to the a is basically going to be equal to uh, this. Is actually, this is going to be equal to g to the b to the a mod p, which is back also going to be equal to g to the b a mod p. Uh, 
And that's because when you uh, take something of the form g to the b and g to the b and raises to the eighth power, you get g to the b a because the exponents basically multiply. And it's a kind of a standard property of regular exponentiation. Now Bob, in turn, what, what can he compute? Well, Bob is, is going to know, um, he's going to have, um, in fact, maybe again, you can pause here to see if you can figure out how Bob would come up with the same value. Uh, but if you want to hear the spoiler, uh, Bob knows capital A, because he's given he's gotten that from Alice, right? Alice uh, gave him this value. Okay, he's gonna be he's gonna raise this value to the lowercase b because he knows lowercase b since he in fact generated lowercase b. So what is uppercase a to the lowercase b? Well that's gonna be equal to uppercase a was uh, g to the a, right? So that was equal to g to the a. And now when you raise that to the bth power, you get uh, g to the a b. Okay, and remember we're doing all of this. Uh, modulo p. Uh, and it's, it's obviously, uh, since multiplication is a commutative operator, um, you can change the order around and still get the same value. Um, in, in this particular case, and there are groups in which multiplication might not be defined as commutative, but we won't consider that for now. But for now, you see that Alice has g to the b a mod p, Bob has g to the a b mod p, and so they actually have a common value. They actually know the same thing. They both have this value, which, which, which it turns out to be the, the exact same thing. Okay, so now Alice and Bob have been able to compute uh, a combined value that's the same. But what does Eve know? What does Eve see now? Eve, okay, her view of the world is she's seen, all she's seen over the network, she's seen capital A and she's seen capital B. Okay, now capital A, um, we're just, she sees uh, G to the A and she sees G to the B. But what she hasn't seen is uh, she hasn't actually seen g to the a, b. And it turns out that if you pick a big enough prime um, and you pick a suitable value for g, and there are ways in, in which to do that, and I won't go into all those details right now, um, it's very hard from g to the a and g to the b to just figure out g to the a, b. Uh, the reality is that it's, it's not like Eve doesn't know lowercase a or lowercase b. She's only seeing the uppercase a and uppercase b. She's not seeing the lowercase values. Uh, and it, there's just, at this point, uh, in terms of in, in, in number theory or in the computational number theory in the field of cryptography, uh, no one knows how to compute um, g to the a, b given g to the a and g to the b for suitable choices of, of, of g and p. And, and that's been a major open problem. If you have any success in being able to solve it, it would be uh, you know, instant PhD thesis, instant fame in the cryptography community. Uh, but to date, to date, it's been now well over, I think, about 35 or so years, and no one has been able to figure out how to uh, to actually crack this problem of coming up with g to the a b given g to the a and g to the b. But now this is pretty amazing because Eve has listened to everything that was going on in this protocol. She's been a, a public party, been able to eavesdrop on everything, but at the same time, uh, she doesn't know at all uh, what the shared secret that Alice and Bob were able to come up with because she's only seen these two public values. She hasn't seen the corresponding secret values. Uh, but because really Alice and Bob each came up with one portion of the secret on their own and shared some public values, they were able to effectively take their respective secret and the other person's public value and combine it uh, both in slightly different ways but to arrive at the, the ultimately the same shared secret which is uh, g to the ab here. Okay, so they were both able to come up with g to the ab, but Eve has no information, no way of actually doing that uh, based on the current state of the art. So I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to continue and talk uh, in future videos about Diffie-Hellman some more. Uh, thanks a lot, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.